Let's get it going and we're live guys. Welcome to another episode of Good Morning Crypto only here only on Ivan on Tech. Today we'll be speaking about how the banks are collapsing in real time. As you know the Bitcoin price is doing so so well but yesterday we did see a report from one of the biggest wealth management firms in the world and what they did you see they have approximately 700 billion under uh, under management and what they did is basically say that the future of banking has no banks if you zoom in on their report you will see this the future of banking has no banks and this is so important why because right now crypto is replacing all banking you have do it yourself do it yourself portfolios do it yourself bank account do it yourself risk accounts everything on chain where you have full control we're gonna go deeper into this because uh, so many different things oops <laughs> sorry, sorry. we're experimenting at this ignore it <laughs> so many different things are are now uh, really coming together you do see the rise of technology like never before you do see the politicians not knowing what the hell to do for example, you do see crypto growing like crazy. You do see AI growing even faster. AI growing like wildfire, okay, right now. And regulators and politicians, they don't know what the hell to do. The banking regulators don't know what the hell to do. They just desperately try to do something. They try to stop things. For example, you know that Italy yesterday, yesterday, banned ChatGPT. This is crazy because I use ChatGPT in everyday life. Our whole company is using ChatGPT in our everyday work to be more productive. This is crazy. And this applies to uh, money. This applies to everything that is going on around us. And whenever you are looking at the current situation, we need to look ahead. Just like we've been speaking on the channel that the end of the current monetary system is close. And we've been speaking about it already since 2020, as you remember. And uh, three years later, we are seeing it play out. And more and more people are understanding it more and more people are starting to get it also because the system simply does not work you know that the biggest critique against crypto has been it's so volatile oh you know it's so volatile you must be a digit trader because you like this kind of volatility you must be betting on some kind of lottery bitcoin is like a lottery to you because you don't have anything else going on in your life you're a loser this is what people have been telling us for the longest time and uh, th the reason is because crypto is volatile so they been basically condescending <laughs> against us so let me know if you've you, if you've uh, recognized it but the thing is right now what we are seeing is that the fiat cannot really be stable itself so german food prices for example skyrocket as food inflation hits 22 percent in march imagine this 22 percent so the biggest argument against crypto is now applying to to fiat as well it's super volatile and by the way crypto at least goes up if you zoom out when you zoom out for years it always pumps it does 100x at 10 next it goes up generally while fiat goes down not only is it volatile day to day it's volatile to the downward direction just like people have been warning us oh be careful stay out of crypto you will be scammed this and that actually long term we are being scammed to the upside which is now proven by history so guys we're gonna go deeper into this because this does affect crypto very very fundamentally this does affect crypto in many directions also because you see this Right now, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, the BRICS countries, have declared that they will create a new currency to challenge the dollar. This came out approximately uh, 23 hours ago. Why is it so important? Because the U.S. has done this to themselves. We've been, we've been saying uh, about this uh, situation, or we've been covering the situation already yesterday. Why? Because it's too much KYC, it's too many sanctions, and too much uh, friction. The dollar is handicapped. It's not useful as a technology. So this is why the dollar is not practical and currencies such as the dollar or any other currency they are inherently worthless the only thing that matters in the world are goods and services the real value that you and i can consume and everything else like a currency is just accounting it's a way of accounting goods and services so by definition they are inherently worthless but as a tool for accounting they need to be easy and practical and inclusive and as you know this is why we're here this is why crypto is becoming big all in all guys we're gonna cover the macro we're gonna go into the charts we're gonna go into altcoins we're gonna do so many different things welcome everyone who is watching live this fantastic saturday you know most people are sleeping while we're here doing research while we're here adjusting ourselves in this market and preparing for the future this is the most important thing right now because 
you know that there are decades when nothing happens, and then there are days when decades happen, all right? I think it was Lenin or someone uh, who said that, <laughs> but it is true. There are decades when really you don't see any change in society, in uh, politics, you don't see anything. It's very stable. And then there are a few weeks where suddenly everything is upside down. The banks are collapsing. You do see people understanding the benefit of having assets without counterparty risk, which is crypto, having assets which are worldwide, which are crypto, which don't really fall under sanctions. The Bitcoin can network cannot sanction you, okay? The Bitcoin network cannot say you're not allowed to use it. We've been covering this for ages, ages. And for the longest time, people have been saying, oh, you're so ridiculous. Why are you so ridiculous? Because I have PayPal and I can transfer money whenever I want. You guys in crypto, you're so ridiculous. You're lunatics. You're, you're, you're moon boys. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. But you see how this is playing out. Anyway, guys, welcome, welcome everyone who is watching live. This fantastic Saturday, if you are watching on YouTube, be sure to smash up the like as soon as possible and write how you're doing this Saturday. Let, let us know. Let us know. Now, guys, before we go into the content, listen to this. Why did Ethereum developer go broke? Because they could not afford gas money. Th there you go. <laughs> sponsored by ChatGPT. April Fool sponsored by ChatGPT. I have a few more. I have a few more. Why did Bitcoin break up with the dollar? Think about it. Because the dollar could not handle a decentralized relationship. It wanted all the control. Damn, this is good. This is good, guys. Sponsored by ChatGPT. We have more jokes coming out. Smash up the likes if you enjoyed uh, enjoyed those jokes. Now let's go into the... <laughs> let's, let's go into the chart. <laughs> let's go into the charts. As you see, Bitcoin right now is at 284 doing very well <laughs> just like the jokes are doing so well uh, we closed a month by the way we did close a new month right here and we're starting a new month which is very green that's that's the power of the monthly chart guys uh, the monthly chart is giving you the full information and the fact that uh, right now we're very green is mostly seen on the monthly chart if you look at the weekly chart or the daily chart you do see a bit of a chop you do see all kinds of chop by the way but on the monthly chart it is very very green and before we go into the meat and potato of this episode as you know our sponsor is Bybit. If you use the link below and you sign up on Bybit, you get a big, fat, juicy bonus, sign up bonus, if you do KYC and if you deposit. Two very important steps. So use the link below and sign up and you can go long, you can sh go short, you can trade anything here, anything here. So that's very important. And also, it's so good to hear you guys enjoying Morales' money. I, I see Eric Hussman tweeting all the time about all the different gems he's, fi he's finding. <laughs> so go and follow Eric Hussman on Twitter. Big shout out to him for doing time stamps, by the way. But we have so, so many things coming. Very soon, you're going to see profitable whales filter. You're going to see way more time frames coming soon as well, because now we just have monthly, weekly, hourly, daily. We're going to have two weeks, three weeks. We're going to have all kinds of flexibility airdropping very, very soon. And listen, I mean, this is the best way to find undervalued altcoins. And the reason is because I have not seen anyone else make money with on-chain analytics uh, from somewhere else. I mean, always on-chain analytics have a big problem. They have too much data. It's too much of different charts, different information, and it's not very practical. I mean, right here, you do see it very, very practically. You do see new coins, what is happening in terms of the security rating, you can uh, use all kinds of filters. So for the bull market, this is the tool, guys. This is the tool to have. And as Bitcoin is approaching 30K, you know our plan. We're gonna increase the price by approximately 50% of the pro plan in Morales Money when we start breaking up. Start breaking up from this um, uh, from this range that we are in right now and go towards uh, 30K. Below, uh, Above 30K, we're raising the prices because the altcoin market is gonna rip. I do think that once we really break this range and and go to 30k which is the next logical stop we're gonna rip so hard and also you see here we're tapping this glass ceiling we're trying to break it already for the past week approximately 10 days what is it almost two weeks we're trying to break this glass ceiling in my mind it's a question of time before we do of course we could get rejected but 
I'm personally super bullish because the stars are really aligning. The stars are really, really aligning now for crypto overall, crypto narrative, Bitcoin narrative, and so on and so forth. On that note, let us go into the overall market. Let, let, let us see how the coins are doing. We do see the following situation. We do have Bitcoin plus 2.4%. We do see ETH plus 1.9%. All in all, the market is quite sideways. Litecoin, almost 6%. There you go. <laughs> quite interesting, quite interesting. Uh, looking at the biggest gainers, Caspa yet again, yet again, pumping very nicely, 120% up. Render 9%, uh, Toncoin 8%. All in all, you do you see this is the power of alts. Uh, many people are saying that it's not alt season yet. Alt season is uh, is not coming anywhere soon. But I'm telling you, there is always alt season. If you know how to find alts, if you know how to research alts, there's always alt season. You can create your own alt season if you have the correct tools. That's why I'm telling you, start using tools like Morales Money. Start understanding these filters. Start understanding the the uh, the time frames and so on and so forth. And if you need help, go and follow Eric Kusman on Twitter because he's tweeting a lot about how to use it. We will also do a tutorial soon, but we just want to add more features. So when we do a tutorial, it's not outdated when we add more stuff because we have a lot of stuff in the pipeline. So right now, Eric Kusman is, is basically the tutorial. And, and when we do some uh, live showings here. Now, guys, let's go into the most important report that I wanted to show you today. This has to do with this uh, wealth management firm, Alliance Bernstein, they have approximately $800 billion in, um, in assets under management. And they released a report uh, yesterday, which was very interesting. And what this report is all about is how the banking space is changing. And I already showed you the conclusion. The future of banking has no banks. But listen to this. The simplicity of crypto as digital bearer assets solves for the immediate counterparty risks that banks customers are dealing with. This is the biggest problem we've been covering for ages on this channel. Why is it so that if I just want to store my money, I need to take a risk? Why is it so that if I just want to use the fruits of my labor, which is money, I have to lend it out as an unsecured loan to a trader, which banks are. They take your money and then they trade. They may lend it out, they may buy treasuries, and you are an unsecured lender. So why is it so? Isn't that fully, fully, fully backwards? Why is it that we have such a situation? Why is no one asking those questions? Why is no one questioning the system? That's something that for ages we've been asking in this industry and wondering and demanding in this industry of crypto. And now the world is catching up. Now the world is also starting to get it. We've been before our time for the past 10, 13 years. So, uh, and thus, Bitcoin as digital bearer asset uh, may not be oh so they're saying basically that ba uh, that bank customers have this problem with risk of banks but customers also require stability and so thus bitcoin as digital bearer asset historically has not been that appealing if you measure stability in usd terms but as we have seen for example with food inflation in germany like you see right here in uh, the us in the uk you understand that actually the USD itself is not that stable. As we head towards another pivotal moment in monetary history, savers would also watch for not just stability in nominal value, but if any further accidents forces the Fed to breach again the real value of the government currency. Basically saying that the Fed is in a very hard place. Do they raise rates and decrease inflation? They're going to wreck the banks. If they wreck the banks, what will happen? They will have to step in and print again. So they try to basically print now so banks are not wrecked, so they can lend to the banks, so they can basically have this emergency lending facility, so that banks can give them treasuries, they can get liquidity. And the Fed cannot do a lot. And uh, this is always at the end of a cycle. This is the death of a currency when the central bank is not powerful anymore, where the central bank is, is at a disarray. So this is what we're going through right now. Um, now, uh, what will happen if more and more people start to catch this is this hyper-Bitcoinization. And we should watch this space. So this is on a macro level why crypto is big. But then they continue and they say the following. As we realize the consequences of this hyperspeed world on the semi-analog, semi-digital financial system, because this is how the banks work, they're kind of digital, but they're not really digital. They're not fully digital. They don't work 24-7 like digital things should do. They're not instant like digital things normally are. You need to wait until they open and close and so forth. So they are semi-analog, semi-digital. And we argue 
this, they say, uh, that smart contract-based decentralized financial systems would suddenly appear as built for this world. I mean, this is what we're saying all the time. This is literally what I'm screaming all the time in the studio together with Alfred, that we need digital neutral infra for finance. Digital meaning at the speed of light. Digital meaning across countries. Digital meaning in any part of the world you can reach it. If you have internet, you have crypto. You have internet, you have finance. You have internet, you're full member of the financial ecosystem. No KYC, none of that crap. You can be part of it. You are not a criminal by default. You are not a suspect by default. This is very important. So, that's why that's why right now it's so good to see that the world is uh, is catching up so we do have for example instant liquidations of positions without any lag we have do it yourself risk vaults on the blockchain deposit stable coins uh, for revenue based yields on the blockchain from financial protocol in our view uh, this will become the new age do it yourself bank accounts i mean this is so brilliant you have self custody and you have do it yourself bank account you can do most of the things the banks do i think that's the biggest realization re realiz realization how do you say it guys realization realization okay that's the biggest realization that actually bankers they don't do a lot like you, they always have nice nice clothing they have nice suit this and that you think they do they have a nice impressive building but then you go there you're like what the hell are you guys doing you move money from a database to another database and it takes you a week it takes you several days i mean if you are on the you know, on the internet you know that entry in a database takes five milliseconds okay you know that if you are doing a transaction you as a bank you lazy as bank you don't do a lot yeah, like you're shifting bits online. So what happens? You take a fee for what? For shifting bits online? Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. What, what, what are you doing? You're not doing a lot. And that's what most people are realizing. Actually, you can set up your brokerage account and you can do trading yourself. You don't need a bank. That's what we've seen with Robinhood and this all in this whole growth of retail investing where retail also wrecks the hedge funds like we saw with GameStop as you remember and uh, right now this will also apply to more and more and more just having your money in a bank like why 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 what are they doing why do they deserve to have this you know insane buildings in each and every city it's always the banks that have the biggest buildings what are they really doing they are taking a cut from everyone's productivity. That, that's it. That's it. They're not adding anything. They're not doing anything for the economy. They're not being productive in any fashion. They're just sitting in between. And that's also what we are seeing uh, Bernstein saying in this, uh, in this report that it's going to be do-it-yourself. Way more customized, way more intelligent and real-time, leading to more freedom and financial independence for the young users of tomorrow. The future of banking has no banks. Listen, this is so beautiful. The future of banking has no banks. We might make this our meme. I love this. I love this. Now, practically, we have the utopia. The future of banking has no banks. I mean, practically, what will happen is that there will always be a need for some kind of service around this open financial stack. So the banks, so to speak, may not be called banks, but there will be room for a lot of business around it. Maybe user interface, maybe insurance. You lose your key, maybe you can get insurance. Maybe you get some something else. All in all, there is still gonna be an ecosystem of services you can use. But what's important is that if you don't wanna use, you're fine. Right now, you're not fine. <laughs> you're not fine. And uh, you, you are forced to use a bank, which is basically doing an unsecured loan. It's crazy, guys. It's crazy, guys. I mean, why is no one calling it the way it is? We're just calling it fractional reserve, the so complex words. But actually, it is unsecured loan that you give to your bank and then they trade it. It's exactly like, um, uh, like, like FTX uh, before they collapse, okay? <laughs> this is exactly like that. Okay, guys, I mean, uh, it's, it's a big trend. This is a big trend that is only going to go higher, 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 and higher. Now, what's more, more important, though, is what do you call a crypto traders, crypto trader? What do you call a crypto trader, guys, who loves, who absolutely loves to dance? Think about it. Think about it carefully. A crypto trader who loves to dance. A moonwalker.
Man, uh, Chad GPT, really fantastic job. <laughs> Man, I love it, I love it. Developers keep developing in the background. Yes, that's exactly true. Now, guys, let's switch uh, switch gears a bit. Um, let me show you this, though. Let, 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 let me show you this. We do have the growth of Bitcoin uh, signaled in this kind of uh, chart. I mean, basically, U.S. national debt. This is a proxy for Bitcoin price. You see how it's growing? How quickly it's growing? And uh, you're here and it's just going to continue to grow vertical. It's going to go exponentially. That's why ChatGPT got banned in Italy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Oops. Uh, th th that's why ChatGPT got banned in Italy. Exactly. <laughs> I agree. I would also ban it. <laughs> uh, so listen, you're here you, and we're going to keep uh, mooning here in the dollar in the dollar chart, the US national debt. While when it comes to Bitcoin, you are here. There is no inflation left in Bitcoin. This is a very nice chart because Bitcoin has fixed supply. It is backed by energy. No one no one can centrally control it. I love that. Um, now, we do see Tim Draper, as you know, one of the most well-known VCs in Silicon Valley, one of the early adopters of crypto, by the way. Now he's saying to all his crypto companies that you got to diversify risk. Businesses can no longer rely on one bank or one governing body to manage their cash. We recommend keeping at least six months six months of short-term cash in each of two banks, one local bank and one global bank, and at least two payroll worth of cash in Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Excess cash can be longer term, but easily sellable in emergencies. For the first time in many years, governments are taking over banks and governments themselves are at risk of becoming insolvent. Bitcoin is a hedge against a domino run on the banks and on poor over controlling governance, okay? This is what's gonna happen, guys. And whenever this deteriorates, the next step is capital control. So like he says, now governments are taking over banks, but what happens when government is bankrupt themselves? Uh, what happens when they wanna stop all outflows of money from the national fiat into crypto and other assets? Uh, we know it. Because we've seen it in Argentina, we've seen it in Venezuela, we've seen it in all countries that have hyperinflation. The next step is capital controls. Where you have money in the bank, the government says you cannot use it. You cannot uh, exchange it for, for anything. You can buy food with it, like you can use it for daily li or life, but you cannot take it out of the system. Okay, That's what's coming next. That's why uh, I'm telling you, crypto, 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 guys, is the only thing. And it's also interesting that we kind of see it started. We see it started with uh, in the US already with uh, this Operation Shock Point. But also, we do see crypto exchanges leaving the US. For example, Bittrex, I think they got started in the US. Um, and uh, right now they're saying that they are winding down US operations. Uh, and the reason is because it's, uh, it's simply too much. It's simply too much. The crypto ecosystem today is very different than nine years ago. Regulatory requirements are often unclear and enforced without appropriate, appropriate discussion or input, resulting in an uneven, even competitive landscape. What does it mean? It basically means that, listen, you try to follow US rules, US regulations, you're going to get leapfrogged by other crypto exchanges outside of the US or by NASDAQ who are friends with the government. And you here you are a startup trying to make it, trying to make it grassroots. I mean, this is what people like Elizabeth Warren should be speaking about, but they are paid by the banks. They are fully sponsored by the banks. They are, they have net worths, these positions in many cases that are anti Crypto, they have net worth, which is like 100 years of their salary. Look into it. It, it, it is very weird. Where, where does the money come from? Because if you are a politician all your life, you can you can, you cannot become a mega whale. Okay, <laughs> Technically, you should not be able to become a mega whale because you're a public servant. You're serving the people. You're not here to become a millionaire. You, you go into politics, at least how it should be by the book, is because you have a drive to improve society, to serve the country. But no. Some of them, they have insane riches. So uh, when you see a startup like Bit Bitrex, we start start a small, grow organically, leaving, and instead Nasdaq takes over, suddenly there is no protection. There is no protection of the little guy. And uh, whenever there is something else, these politicians always want to look like they are protecting the little guy. But this, I mean, this is the little guy right here. This is the little guy who tried to do something in crypto in the US, and... Uh, 
it doesn't work anymore. Like it's too, it's too much. And actually the opportunities are just bigger worldwide. Why do you want to comply with the US regulation when you can just close shop in the US, remove all US uh, customers and, um, and, and do global business instead? And the reason is because the reason that, well, why it makes sense is because crypto is big in, in many countries. Like crypto is a massive, massive market. Obviously, US is one of the best markets in the world when it comes to uh, wealth, how much people are spending and so on and so forth. But it's not going to be the end of the world if you do business outside of the US, without the US. Look at Binance, look at FTX. They all had a separate business for the US and uh, they still did fine. So, uh, or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> depending on the definition of fine but they could still grow their business before the exit scale <laughs> one second <laughs> there we go and it's still possible to grow to massive levels outside of the us as the point here Let's see if Binance survives. I mean, FTX definitely did not do fine, but let's see if Binance survives. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, there is some uh, critique against crypto. I, I just want to highlight this. Uh, you know, New York Times does an article about crypto saying that Bitcoin has Bitcoin really benefited from the banking crisis? Not in the way its fans hope to. See, I, I hate this tone this um, uh, this uh, condescending you know we're we're bitcoin fans you know you, they don't say jp morgan fans they don't say tradfi hedge fund fund fans but they do say bitcoin fans you know these cute fans with a few brain cells <laughs> you know there is justin bieber fans there is uh, backstreet boy fans and then there are crypto fans, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, they're also saying basically that there is apparently no evidence, they're saying there is apparently little evidence of widespread support for Bitcoin as a financial alternative, okay? As we, the fans, want it to be. And that's that's exactly like Saif Adin Amus says. Anytime fiat cartel mouthpiece media use the term there's little evidence like they always like to use it there's little evidence like there's some kind of scientist they always try to make it uh, sound scientific as if they are as if they're scientists but uh, anytime they do that uh, you know that uh, there is something shady here there, it's not fully correct you can translate it to the following our cartel bosses pay us to ignore all evidence that doesn't suit their quest to rob you okay this is another way of looking at it and I, I think that right now we are becoming quite um, quite sick of it. Like in crypto in general, we have been right for, for so long. We've been correct for so long. And still, to this day, you do see this, uh, uh, th this kind of media. And um, I mean, it is like Trump said, it, it's dishonest media, okay? Fake news, absolutely. Because you see a clear alternative to the problem. The problem is that when you have a bank account, you have uncollateralized loan. You're giving them uncollateralized loan. And then they lose it. And then the government has to take them over. So, yeah, exactly. Evidence or they're, they're the evidence or. Uh, so, yeah. And also, for 10 years, for 10 plus years, as long as Bitcoin has existed, there's always this, you know, smart wannabe economists in the media who always say, oh, you know, Bitcoin is crashing. Yep, it was a bubble. Yep, it was a bubble. Uh, have you seen this article? Bitcoin crashed. Yep, it was a bubble. I remember this. <laughs> Bitcoin, yep, it was a bubble. Okay. Look here. L look at the stone. I, I really dislike the tone media has. Look here. Bloomberg. Yep, Bitcoin was a bubble and it popped in 2018. I mean, what the hell are you speaking about? Just zoom out, zoom out and see. Zoom out and see for yourself. Uh, what kind of bubble? Like, what, what, what are you speaking about? It is a bubble to the upside. It is a bubble that only uh, that only grows bigger and bigger. And here, Bloomberg, like, yep, it popped. It popped, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't know. I, I, I'm a bit. Uh, as you can see, I'm a bit bitter when it comes to this because it's uh, it's weird. Like, it's so weird. Do, do, do you feel this? Or, or uh, maybe I'm the only one, but I, I feel it's so weird. The, the way media is like, yep, told you guys, but you didn't listen. You you crypto fans, your cute uh, few brain cell crypto fans, you didn't listen. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> now, what is funny is that the US government is also selling Bitcoin. 
Have you heard that? They're sell they're, they're selling they're selling they're selling Bitcoin from Silk Road. They're selling forty thousand Bitcoin, and they already sold ten thousand in March. And Bitcoin pumped a lot when they sold. Uh, this is crazy, and uh, this really shows you that Bitcoin does not care. There are no sellers left. The U.S. government wants to sell. Okay, they sell and uh, and yeah, and, and it still pumps. There are no sellers left. And when when a big seller like U.S. government comes in, the the sell pressure is instantly absorbed. Look here, U.S. government sold uh, ten thousand Bitcoin approximately on March fourteenth. Let's go to March fourteenth. So apparently here they sold, okay? So probably U.S. government selling 10k Bitcoin, it was this uh, dump from 26 all the way to 24, okay? So we dumped like 7% when they sold, boop. And uh, since then, like since the, the, the sell, we've already pumped another 15%. So they're gonna sell three more times like this, they're saying. Uh, let's see, where is it? They're gonna t sell uh, three more times. And uh, it's going to be over the course of this year. And Bitcoin doesn't care. Why? Because it's just another another uh, concern that is gone. This is bullish for the market. Because the market has already priced it in. We know already that the government wants to sell and we knew it for years. Now we know more concretely that they will sell this year. But the market already knows this. So the prices are adjusted already for this. Because market is always forward looking. Whatever it thinks or knows will happen tomorrow. The price already adjusts to that reality today. Because you don't, you if you have if you have an investment and you know that something bad is going to happen tomorrow, what do you do? You sell it already today. <laughs> you, you don't wait until last second. That's why if we know something good is going to happen tomorrow, the price already pumps today. Why? Because you have money. You know this, this thing is going to pump tomorrow. You buy it today and everyone buys it today. So it pumps today. So this is what we mean when it's forward looking. And uh, it's good. Like I think it's good that we, we get this out and uh, it's, it's done and we can move on and we can go to new all-time highs. Um... Yeah, guys, I mean, on that note, this is it for this uh, fantastic uh, Saturday. Hope you learned something. Hope you understood what's happening. Hope you are a bit more prepared. But to summarize the side, guys, Bitcoin is doing well. Bitcoin is pumping quite nicely right now. And we are doing doing the projection towards 30k. Uh, let's see what will happen with this uh, resistance. Because it is quite heavy resistance, but we're trying it for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Seven, eight, nine, ten days. I mean, ten days we're touching it. We're touching it right here at approximately 28.5. Trying to break it, trying to get through it. And um, at some point it will happen because whenever resistance, whenever a level is being touched a lot, it breaks. At some point it breaks. It's kind of like, you know, you try to kick in a door. You kick a few times, it doesn't open. But then you kick it the uh, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, and it does open. Okay, guys, on that note... Let's go to Q&A. Let me see. I think I, I did all the uh, all the jokes. Uh, yeah, I mean, th 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 these are all the jokes I had <laughs> I, I had in store for you. Ho hope you enjoyed them. I, I always try to find something for April's Fool. I think, but I think the last time we did it was like 2019. Then 2020, 2021, uh, we didn't do anything uh, anything special. But this time I took my time to do something. Thank God, no more jokes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank God. <laughs> okay, guys. On that note, we're heading towards the Q and A. Let me do some refilling of coffee. How is your altcoin hunting going? Oh, l let me say something, by the way, because I see some people wondering how to use Morales money in the daily life. Like, should you be buying stuff all the time? Should you be executing trades all the time? And in reality, the first thing you should do is to just learn it and get a feeling for the markets. Um, so if you start using Morales money, just look here, try it out. Like, see which coins were minted in the last 100 days on Binance, for example. Uh, we, we are here on the Binance chain. See what's happening. Then you can say, okay, uh, these are coins minted in the last 100 days. You can say, uh, give me them ordered buy security score high to low and now you're gonna get all coins on binance chain minted in the last 100 days when it loads uh and they, they're all uh, ordered from high security score to low and then you can start getting a feel then you can go to uh, eth you can say okay give me the same but on eth and you can go here and we're still working on making this sourcing thing not reset uh, we probably have to refactor this um, this ui a bit but now it resets when you change the chain but here you can do the same thing uh, 
start start learning about the ecosystem. Start understanding the data, feeling the data, seeing what the hell happens. Okay. So now you have this, and then you can continue digging, continue getting into it. Uh, continue, for example, then you can say, okay, uh, I also want the liquidity to increase by at least you know this amount in the last uh, month, or let's say in the last week. And then you can run the query. So again, we're, we're working on making this automatic, but now you have to manually set again the uh, security score higher to low. Uh, so this is what I would do, and you know, then you see liquidity is bullish. You could add the uh, experienced buyers and start feeling it. Start feeling it. Uh, open the map. Uh, open the map. Like you see, for example, offshift. This is actually a coin which is, uh, uh, which has been around for quite some time. But I don't know why it's maybe it's new on. ETH. I mean, th this is quite an old coin. I remember in the last bull market, but they just minted a new version or something. Let's check uh, off shift because I remember we covered this. It's like a privacy solution or something. Um, and there is no. Let's see. Oh, they mic. They migrated the contract. Gotta gotta gotta. So in this case, they migrate. They migrate the contract. It makes sense. But uh, next step is that you know once you know how to fill the data here is to go into this and and learn more. Go into Dex tools. So you open Dex tools by clicking this button right here. When you open Dex tools, now you see social media, you see all stuff. Like you can click on Twitter, for example, see what the hell they're doing, and you see okay, it's twelve thousand followers. There are people that follow it that that I follow, so probably something, and. Um, then you can see, yeah, who, what's happening, are they working, are they not working, stuff like that. And and start getting a feel, like you don't have to FOMO into anything. This is more, this needs to be a lifestyle, okay? This needs to be for you a lifestyle of how to work with alts and how to have alts in your life every day and how to like it. And don't feel the urge to, you know, buy something today as soon as possible because it's, it's way better that, you know, you, you, you're part of this. You understand how this works. You, you understand what kind of coins there are, what kind of chains there are, how things are minted, and so on and so forth. I found Anshes on Morales and made a 4CX. Wow. That's very nice. I mean, <laughs> that, that's why we exist, so you can make a 4CX. So, uh, Nedis, tell us, how did you find it? Which, which filter you used and which chain? What was your strategy? Uh... Try to buy different coins at the moment. I'm at the moment. At the moment, I'm not in profit, but uh, uh, now I have to wait to. I mean, that's another thing. Whenever we are looking at uh, uh, at bigger coins, it may take some time for them to do anything. When you l look at more digital coins, like for example, with lower security score, that's when you can have faster <laughs> faster action. But it's all about which risk you want to take. I mean, obviously, coins that have been around for like you know weeks and months uh they're not gonna have violent out of nowhere uh, performance uh, every day but if you want like every day insane action then you could go to lower time frame like you know five you could say that uh, give me all coins that are that have security score and you are you know you're okay with them being above 50. Like, there's gonna be a lot of rug pulls <laughs> if you do like this but uh yeah i mean you can run the query and then you see okay you can check this one. If you if you want to be more digital, you can lower it to to twenty. <laughs> you can see what, what what's gonna happen there. You're gonna have way more coins, uh, and they're gonna do crazier things. I can tell you that. Um, so yeah, I mean, listen, it, it's 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 up to your risk profile. If you want things to happen quickly, I mean, here they happen very quickly, both to the upside and to the downside. <laughs> so the red ones, I mean, normally the chance of them being a rug pull is quite high. So be very careful here. Here they have buy tax, sell tax. You can do more research by opening them like this. Uh, but at the same time, you see here the the move here, from here to here, it was seven thousand. Yeah, uh, like does it make sense to chase this kind of thing? I don't know, guys. Also because the liquidity is super small, volume is super small. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you throw in a hundred bucks and then something happens, like, it's up to you, really. Uh, it's up to you. That's why Morales money, it's it's so nice because it has something for everyone. If you want to be Dijon, you want to be not Dijon. I mean, overall, everything here is kind of Dijon. Like all, we're looking at all coins that are minted in the last hundred days, guys. Like if we do like this, whatever you're looking at here, I mean, in some way, it's going to be Dijon, okay? Because they're, they're all minted three, less than three months ago, or like a bit more than three months ago. But, 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 
uh, there are levels to Dijon. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there are levels to Dijon. You can go even more Dijon. So yeah, that's um, that. That's how I would do it in terms of practical. Because I know many people are asking, you know, practically, what do I do? Well, practically, just become comfortable first. Become comfortable, understand what's happening, and understand um, uh, understand you know the feel for it, uh, the the feel for the situation. Uh, go to different chains, go to different time frames, see if you, you know, you, uh, you you get a feeling for what what will work for you and not. Um, I showed him to my son as he's in second master of traditional finance and be also been following Ivan. Ah, that's nice, that's nice. That's super nice. Yeah, you get as a young person, you gotta know crypto today. You gotta at least know what's happening. More Phil on the channel. Yeah, we got good feedback yesterday. So we did a, a video with Phil, our head of research at Morales. He he also got nice feedback to be less of a like weather formal weather reporter and um, and more personal. So he, he he will take that feedback. And yeah, each Friday he will cover uh, his altcoins because the thing is, he has different interests than I do. So he teaches me a lot. And uh, he knows about, you know, this van chain, uh, crescent, f I've never used any of that. I just see him do that. And uh, and sometimes I learn from him uh, about his stuff. Like he's very into these spaces where I'm not, uh, I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not there yet anyway. So uh, I'm always learning a lot from him. So I thought it would be interesting to uh, to bring him on the channel to show what he's doing as well. And he's he's handling our private groups and our uh, uh, our academy uh, groups where we do where we do all coin uh, where we do all coin exploration. So yeah, he's uh, he, he's fantastic. Just like Amad oh Amadio Brands also did a video on our channel. Actually, Amadio Brands, who I think was in the in this chat before, he predicted the the uh, top for Bitcoin. Like in 2020, he said that he's gonna go to. Uh, 1.3 trillion. We have a video somewhere on that. I need to find it. But he, he predicted exactly, and this was in 2020 before the before the pump. Oh, there he is, Dio Brands. I see, I see, I see. Ivan, can you tell us how new gem coins breaks? <laughs> we need to find the new network. We need to add a new network to Morales Money. The bricks, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, would be cool to ho to have a Twitter follower value on Morales Talking Explorer. Ah, that's nice, that's nice. And and have filters for pop popular. See, uh, I'm looking into that, actually. I'm looking into that. So I know that there is an API for Lunar Crash, and we we need to see how we can integrate it, because I do think that it, it's valuable to see the, uh, the social stuff. And let's see, they have, I mean, uh, Lunar Crash, they have their, their, this thing with, like, social... But I, I, I don't really like this, you know, the alt rank trademark. Yeah, I mean, TM, yeah. Uh, but maybe this is what we... But is it the one? I think they had another one in the past, which was not... It was like Lunar Score, which was another thing. Uh, but, yeah, may discover... What What is alt, alt rank? And they, they see they do influencers, so they they, they they see top influencers, and then yeah, so they have a bunch of stuff based on based on social. So either we integrate them or we just integrate the Twitter API, and uh, we check ourselves, which could also be an option. And uh, the thing is, when you want, yeah, I mean, basically, what we need is. To see on chain if whales are buying, and then see on Twitter if influencers that have been successful in the past are promoting them or like finding them. A great strategy is to stay cool and write down ideas and trade only once a week. Says Amadou. I agree with you. I agree with you. By the way, Ivan, happy first of April. You're Merlin, man of wizard, king of wizard. <laughs> thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Would like to make a watch list. And, oh, that's an interesting one. That's a very interesting one. I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we should add a watch list that you can add stuff to your watch list. Let me write it down. Watch list. 
I mean, soon we will have a thing where you can save a query. Well, you can save a query already, by the way, but we will have this notification thing. We need Morales money Telegram. Ooh, yes. Yes, 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 man. Telegram roof. Actually, we have a Slack. Uh, we already have a Slack and... Uh, I mean, with Telegram group, group guys, it's gonna suck at some point. It's, it's, it's not gonna be good with Telegram group because it's just one chat, one one feed is gonna get chaotic. You're gonna and what's gonna happen is that you're just gonna mute it, and you're never gonna come back. Instead, I think for people that want to, I mean, that want to really discuss, uh, is either Slack or Discord uh, that uh, that we can have. So, yeah. Uh, I'll look into that. Slack, Slack, or I mean, the problem with Discord is that it's so easy to. Uh, yeah, I feel that you have so much stuff there. Like how I personally see it, uh, I have so much stuff in Discord that uh, it's easy that it gets lost, you know, somewhere. So that's why. That's why we have Slack right now, but only for uh, we we don't promote it, but we had it for beta, because in Slack you don't uh, you don't have a lot of Slacks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we want like we want to want to have activity there uh anyway i will i will think about it but uh, yes we definitely need to grow a, a a chat some kind of group market cap as a filter is coming that's a good idea uh k punk uh, so you can say give me all uh, that are below a certain market cap yes 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 it's coming it's coming would be convenient i was just uh, okay. Can you say out loud <laughs> Pampa mentals, fundamentals, <laughs> Mimi mental? <laughs> uh, agree, social value is important. I, I, I want. When will you come to Slovenia again? Let's see. Last time I was uh, in 2018, I think I visited Origin Trail. It was good times. Uh, Tab finally changed IBAN number to. Great Britain Bank yesterday. Uh huh. That's nice. So they ha they they don't have the Estonia Bank anymore, or only for Great Britain. But I guess it's good because if you want pounds, you want a pound-based system. Uh, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> I used liquidity added by fifty k and holder by fifty increased on weekly. Oh, that that's Nedit when you got that nice forty uh, x. So you made forty x on. Let me see the coin. So you, you you out already or you're still in the trade? Like what the hell is this? Smart contract uh, owner. It says that the smart contract owner can mint new tokens. <laughs> so be careful <laughs> if you're still there. <laughs> that, I mean, that's the thing, guys. If you make nice money on some random coin, uh, be happy because it can be a scam still. That like that's an important thing to understand. Uh, sometimes these rug pulls they can do like a 40x before they uh, rug pull. So be careful. Like especially if you go into these coins with lower grading, with lower score, secure deck score, then you gotta be careful because even if you make money, like they can still they can still a rug pull. So uh, it, because I, I saw the coin you 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 t wrote, uh, it says that the owner can mint new coins. So yeah, does the U.S. government have to pay capital gains tax on sold Bitcoin? That's a very good question. And by the way, this is where their logic doesn't make sense. They are selling an asset which they cannot produce. They cannot produce Bitcoin. And they're selling Bitcoin, super valuable asset, super scarce asset, for dollars they can print at any time themselves. I don't understand this logic. It's so weird. Like the US government is selling something they cannot produce for something that they can produce just with a button click that hyperinflates. And then they're telling that we don't know what we're doing in crypto because we are DJs, we have high, you know, high risk tolerance. We're here because we like volatility because we don't have anything else going for us. See, this is this is what I don't understand. Sometimes these people that tell us what to do, they think that they are smarter than us. And then they do this thing where they sell an asset, which is so valuable for dollars. They can print on any moment. Um, now, 
it's good for this decentralization of assets though. we don't want the government holding uh, holding bitcoin really we want it to be decentralized so, so that's good sponsor sponsors okay <laughs> that's good that you remind me guys as you know we are sponsored by bybit number one you use the link below you sign up you get a big fat juicy bonus if you do kyc and you deposit you gotta do both kyc deposit you can go long you can go short and uh, trade assets in all directions and also our second sponsor is tap you also use the link below so with tap the good thing with tap like the best thing with tap is that you get bank account in your own name so if you want to buy a bunch of crypto like let's say you want to exit the banking system fully you want to do it today how do you do it uh, you can try transferring to coinbase but they're not gonna allow you they're gonna tell you ayabaya ayabaya you're not allowed to transfer because you will most likely do something irresponsible if you transfer to Coinbase because it's crypto and we see that you try to transfer to a crypto exchange, I buy it. you're not allowed. So they block your transfer. Instead, if you sign up for TAP using the link below, what will happen is that you will get the bank account in your name. So when you open a, a, the TAP app and you deposit funds into TAP, you're not sending funds to a crypto exchange. You're not sending funds to some crypto thing. You're sending funds to your own bank account in another bank. So your own bank, your current bank, will not know it's crypto. They will just see that, aha, uh -huh, you're transferring to your own account in your own personal name in another bank. So there, are, they can, there can be no questions. They cannot stop you from not using their, their bank and you want to use another bank. So that's the beauty. That is the beauty of, uh, of TAP, that you get your own bank account in your own name and then from there one button click you you buy crypto and then transfer it to cold storage you can exit the banking sector very easily like this smart contract owner can mint new token sounds like something similar exactly exactly it's the fed it's the fed guys um same story as it was with the government trying to sell gold 30 years ago exactly so get out while you can. That's important. Otherwise, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be uh, capital capital control very soon. I think so, guys. On that note, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks a lot for contributing to the show. Big shout out to Eric Kusman for doing the timestamps. Uh, everyone who's watching on YouTube, smash up the like as soon as possible. See you all very soon. See you all tomorrow at 10 a.m. Enjoy your day and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.